Hello there ghouls and goblins. Ed and Lorraine Warren are quite possibly the two most famous demonologists in the world. You know we talk about them all the time on Top 5 Scary and still we're like barely scratching the surface when it comes to all there is to know about the two of them. This is Top 5 Ed and Lorraine Warren secrets that just got uncovered. What's your favorite of the Conjuring movies in its extended Conjuring universe? Make some noise off down below in the comments for me. Number 5 Ed Warren's Haunted House Ed and Lorraine probably spent more time inside haunted houses than most people People spend inside regular houses. As the world's most storied demonologists, they certainly knew their way around a haunting. Was it their calling, perhaps? Ed Warren would disagree, saying he thinks a calling is something lofty and majestic in his own words, but rather he thought that it was something that had in fact guided him to becoming a warrior of the spirit world. Perhaps it was a twist of fate from the start that made Ed pursue his career in demonology, as the first house he had ever lived in as a boy was a haunted house. Makes sense, right? In fact, Ed Warren's first ever reported interaction with a spirit was when he was just a child. The Warren family landlady, who Ed Warren described as not particularly nice, hated kids, dogs, cats, and would sit by the window and yell at neighborhood kids. She lived above them and would pass. Ed describes an encounter when he was a young boy where he went upstairs and saw his closet door swing open by itself. Inside the closet was a small floating dot of light that began to grow and grow and grow. In a few seconds, the light grew to the size of a person and manifested as the landlady, wearing that same scowl that Ed would recognize. Ed ran down and told his father what he had seen, who had told him to just forget it and never tell anyone. He wouldn't tell, but he certainly would not forget. And Ed Warren credits this incident with being the inciting event to inspire him to research the paranormal and to study the things that live beyond our world. Soon after this event, he would start to be reached in dreams repeatedly by dead relatives he had never met, including an aunt who would send him messages about his future, offering him guidance, and telling him that one day he would walk alongside priests but would not become one himself. He was attending a Catholic school while also living in a haunted house, a fact which amused him greatly as a boy. He said, although he didn't like going to church, he would pay extremely close attention to lessons about spirits and demons, as he knew it was going to be incredibly important in his life one day. And my ghouls and goblins, if you're looking for more facts and videos about Ed and Lorraine Warren, the case Cases they've studied, cryptids, aliens, and just about everything weird and unusual. Top 5 Scary's got all of that and then even more on top of that waiting for you. So click on through, find something freaky, creep on creeping on, and subscribe, maybe. Number 4. Lorraine's Abilities Much like her husband Ed, Lorraine would know from a very early age that the spirit world was reaching out to her. Barely even three blocks away from Ed Warren, Lorraine lived. Was it fate that had brought them together? Some divine purpose? Or a happy coincidence because they live pretty close together? Lorraine Moran had a knack for extrasensory perception, and as a young girl had believed that everyone had this sixth sense that they had access to. She didn't know that we're not all psychic. Sorry, Lorraine. At the time, Lorraine was attending a private all-girls academy, and one Arbor Day, the nation's favorite holiday and every child's favorite holiday, her class was planting trees outside in the front, and Lorraine found herself distracted. She describes how as soon as the girls in her class had planted the sapling, she looked at it and saw it not as a sapling, but rather vividly saw it as a completely full grown tree, with its branches stretching outwards into the sky, its leaves blowing and falling. Lorraine said it was indistinguishable from the real thing, not like a hallucination, like she could see it right in front of her. She said she couldn't even tell that it was a second sight. She was completely lost in the majesty of the tree when her teacher asked her what she was doing looking so intently. She said she had been staring at the full grown tree. Her teacher, confused, asked her if she was seeing the future, and rather matter of factly, Lorraine responded that Yes, she was. Although Lorraine thought answering honestly was the right thing to do, she was sent to a weekend church retreat to pray and pray and pray away her delusions. Lorraine learned rather quickly to keep mention of her extrasensory vision to herself as most people in small town Connecticut didn't quite understand her abilities. It wouldn't be until she was 18 years old and met Ed Warren that she would find a confidant who understood what she saw and how she could use her gift to help people. Number three. How psychic is she? Naturally, Lorraine's psychic abilities came into some scrutiny. I mean, that does make some sense. I mean, you claim you're psychic. People are gonna ask you all sorts of annoying questions like, are you really? No one just trusts you. 
Interestingly, even Lorraine herself didn't fully believe in the paranormal until she made a career of it. In the beginning, Lorraine was wary of just about everyone they had met, and believed that the people who were reporting these hauntings or describing strange things in their home were just speaking with an overactive imagination, or were just making things up for attention. And save that point for later in the video, because that's going to come up again. It was only after working several cases where she started to notice recurring trends between everything that they'd worked on and all the things that these cases were telling her that she started to believe that what she was doing was real and there was a grander connection to it all. After they started to become more well known for their work on the cases that inspired The Conjuring or the Amityville Horror, there was some outcry from people who said that Lorraine was faking this and the two of them were faking it. So to quiet her critics, Lorraine had herself tested by a doctor named Dr. Thelma Moss, who is a parapsychologist studying abilities outside the human experience. Researching things like extrasensory perception, the spirit world, Lorraine went for extensive psychic testing and the doctor had reported that Lorraine was an above average clairvoyant. Ooh, put that on the fridge. In the 80s, Lorraine and Ed were renowned enough as psychics that even law enforcement officers took note of it and had actually requested for Lorraine Warren's aid on a string of missing persons cases, believing the help of a psychic would be just what they needed. A move that was seen as a bit controversial at the time. Number 2. Their relatives carry on their legacy Although Ed and Lorraine Warren themselves unfortunately are no longer with us, they worked hard to ensure to pass on their ideas, their teachings, to ensure that their legacy would outlast their mortal forms. And I mean, that's kind of if you believe they're really gone. I mean, these people worked with spirits their whole life. They've got to be out there somewhere, their spirits guiding, right? In 1952, Ed and Lorraine founded the New England Society for Psychic Research as a way of tracking and documenting their cases. As well, famous Famously, just like shown in the movies, Ed and Lorraine kept a magnificent museum of all the cursed relics, horrible things, and demonic objects that they'd encountered over the years in their cases, including the infamous Annabelle amongst many, many others. She doesn't quite look like how she does in the movies though, she's a little more raggedy in real life. But with Ed and Lorraine no longer around to run the society, it was now left in the hands of their daughter Judy and their son-in-law Tony Sparrow, who has taken it upon himself to maintain the Warren's legacy and is a demon demonologist and paranormal investigator of his own volition. He inherited their museum of cursed objects and he takes care of their most dangerous ones, maintaining the rituals necessary to keep them cleansed and pure. Now, unfortunately, the museum is currently closed at the time of this video, but Mr. Sparrow is working to get it reopened to the public. Annabelle does tour though, if you're ever looking to catch her in your town. She's got a good agent, I guess, and she makes appearances all over at paranormal conventions. You can take a photo with her, she takes lots of photos with fans. She doesn't really answer too many questions though, she's not a big talker. Sparrow isn't the only of the Warrens' relatives trying to carry on their legacy, however. Their nephew, one John Zappis, who I've mentioned a few times on this channel actually, was inspired by stories and tales of his demonologist uncle as a boy and followed in their path, becoming a paranormal investigator himself and opening his own museum of haunted relics just outside of his home, just like his uncle. You gotta wonder if there's any members of the extended Warren family who don't have a museum of cursed relics and if they feel a bit left out. Zaphis' museum, much like the Warrens, is blessed and anointed with holy water and monitored closely by a priest to make sure none of the haunted relics dwelling inside it worm their way loose. Number 1. Maybe it was all fake though. Well, it feels really wrong to end the video on this point, but it also felt really wrong to not mention it all either, and I thought it was either number 5 or number 1, and I settled on number 1 being a better ending. I believe any good skeptic or paranormal enthusiast must always ask themselves the toughest question when it comes to anything supernatural. Was it real, or were they just making it all up, okay? Every molder needs a scully asking those questions. It's been a long running debate and discussion as to whether or not Adam Lorraine were really demonologists, or if they were just a pair of very careful charismatic storytellers, and it was a bit of a complicated ruse to sell a bunch of books and get some movies made. Now, since the Warrens have passed, several stories and more doubt has begun to creep out, decrying the Warrens as nothing more than grandiose storytellers. For one example, the lawyer in the Amityville horror case who was representing Ronald DeFeo, the assailant who slayed his family, admitted that a majority of the story involving the infamous haunting was all just that. Just a story generated under his own admission that he made up over a bottle of wine with the Lutz family, that's the family that moved into the alleged haunted house, as a way of cooking up the story a little bit in the hopes of getting a retrial for Ronald DeFeo. Another example that came out was the haunting in Connecticut case. Very famous case, the Warrens wrote a book on it, there were a few movies made. The Warrens book detailing their experiences with that case was called In a Dark Place. It was co-authored by Ray Garten 
who is a horror novelist who was asked to help out and punch up the novel a little bit. Garden had a bit of an issue though because he said when he was interviewing the family involved in the case, he found that their stories didn't match up, and frequently they were contradicting each other describing the haunting. Garden asked Ed Warren for advice on what he should do about it, and Ed gave him this response saying, oh they're crazy. You've got some of the story, just use what works and just make the rest up and just make it scary. Or what about the Enfield case, the basis for the second Conjuring film which was greatly exaggerated, as the Warrens only arrived for a single day, uninvited and were then sent away by the family. Ed Warren told another investigator working the case that we could make some serious money off of this one. And seeing how much money the Conjuring franchise has made, well it seems like you don't need to be a psychic to see that and maybe the truth was getting in the way of a good story just a little bit. Real or not, you cannot deny that the Warrens have a lasting legacy, an entertaining one and are fascinating to read about, and no doubt we'll be discussing them on this channel and in the world larger for years and years to come. That's all for this video my ghouls and goblins, thanks for listening to me ramble, creep on creeping on and I'll see you in the next one.